welcome everybody. We are back with another teacher boot camp. This is our longest running class we've, oops, we've been doing for about two years now. Um, this is the first class that we even did on script camp. Um, it will be the class we're always doing. So writing a movie in eight weeks is the name of the game here with the first half of class dedicated to planning and outlining and trying to figure out what happens essentially on every page of your story. And then the second half of class focused on actually executing that story and trying to keep your momentum up and write pages every day so that you finish within the time frame. So let's take a look at the essentials. <clears throat> so we are Script Camp. This is an online community that you can find on Discord. So if you're watching on YouTube, Twitch, or Twitter, or something else like that, you should come join us on Discord. We have multiple communities. Our biggest ones are Script Camp and Word Camp. Script Camp being focused on screenwriting and TV writing, Word Camp focused on writing books. We have lots of free classes, table reads, strip swaps, writers groups. Some classes for our supporting members too, so you can come to just the free stuff if you want to. Or you can sign up at scriptcamp.net. You get access to absolutely everything that we do. Every class, workshop, and event. Over a hundred hours of different things every month. A video library, exclusive Discord channels, massive discounts on consultations and proofreads, access to Writer's Lab, and also just um, you will be part of our growing community of other writers of stage and screen. So um, let's look at a couple more slides up top. Just to start off, I am a feature writer first and foremost. I moved to LA in 2015, right after graduating college with no connections, got signed in 2017 for the first time off of um, a Launchpad Top 10 script, went on to play some Nickel Tony finals, wrote an episode of Creepshow, have had a few thriller scripts set up in town before the strike, and I teach the writer's labs and the weekly boot camps in TV, feature, and novel writing. Here's the dates for all the boot camps. So we have a bunch of new sessions starting this month. So if you're interested in TV, features, novels, then we have a bunch of things for you to check out. So Fridays at 6 p.m., that's starting September 15th, gonna be the new session of our TV pilot bootcamp where you'll write a whole pilot in six weeks. We have novel bootcamp that just started yesterday. We've split it into two halves. The first half is all about outlining. That's meeting Saturdays 12 to 2 for the rest of September. Feature bootcamp starts right now, today. It's running Sundays 10 to 12 um, for eight weeks. And we have 90 day novel bootcamp. That's the writing portion of that class that starts on the 30th at the end of this month. So no matter what kind of fiction writing you're into, there's some class for you to take. I recommend probably only try to stick with one of these projects at a time, just because it is so incredibly time consuming and challenging and difficult to finish even one of these works of fiction within the time frame that we are allotting here. So probably just stick to one boot camp at once. But um, if you want to check out a couple different ones and just try to decide what kind of writing you're most interested in, that is also totally fine. So here's the schedule for this upcoming boot camp. Um, the feature boot camp always goes the same way. We're eight weeks. First four weeks are all about figuring out what happens in the story, figuring out what are you writing, why, and what specifically are is going to happen in each act, in each major scene, um, nailing down what those major scenes are going to be. And then we have your uh, second half of the class, which is starting on October 8th. We're going through... Um, one sort of piece of the script at a time, one, one structural section of the script at a time in the lecture for the week. And then you will always be able to give us updates on how your script is going, ask questions. If you're stuck on something, that's a good time to get unstuck. And we also have Writer's Labs Saturdays from four to six if you have additional questions that don't necessarily fit into the same time frame of the classes, or maybe you need additional one-on-one -on -one help, then Saturdays from four to six, you'll be able to get that extra boost, get unstuck from wherever you are stuck in your project. The goal is to finish this first draft by November 12th. So that means that this is kind of like a freebie first week before the actual course begins. This is an overview, looking at everything that is going to come ahead and maybe getting that initial feedback that you might need to help start crafting your logline more carefully as we move through the rest of the steps. So there's your overview. Hope that's all clear with everybody. Um, if you have questions or comments, you can feel free to use the text chat by mousing over the classroom voice channel and clicking the small white word bubble that says open chat. You can then type those out and I'll check those back um, throughout the class. And uh, you can raise hands as well. I usually call for times where people should raise hands, but if you really have a super urgent pressing question, then you can raise your hand throughout. 
Uh, looks like we have a question in the chat. The, what if we miss one boot camp due to prior commitments? Is there a way to get a resume of the session or like a recap of the session? Yeah, we share the um, slideshows for every session. And if you are an unlimited member, then you'll get access to video recordings of each of the classes. And the first couple classes of every boot camp, at least week zero and one, are always going to be free and public online. So you can always you can find this one that you're currently watching on YouTube right afterwards. Okay, so the goal is to finish by November 12th. It's okay if you miss some classes or if you don't finish or if you fall behind. There's no grades. There's no failing. There's no flunking. The only negative result might be that you don't finish your scripts, um, in which case we hope to at least have given you that boost so that you are able to finish it in, on your own in the weeks that follow the conclusion of any individual course. So hopefully we at least set you on the proper path to finishing and you're able to do so on your own. So here's the upcoming classes we have this month. We have a brand new class later today at 5 p.m. sci-fi story ideas that I'm co-teaching with a good friend of mine who's a science teacher, Eli Sloan. That will be 5 p.m. on Script Camp. These are all in Pacific time, Los Angeles time, because we're based in LA. We are having week two of novel structure and outlining September 9th, 12 to 2 on WordCamp. A new class called Writing for Young Readers in the next day, September 10th, 12 to 2, also on WordCamp. And then I already mentioned the other boot camps that you can see here. So we'll hope to see some people at Sci-Fi Story Ideas later today at 5 p.m. <clears throat> we have table reads, multiple sessions per week, Sunday at 2, Tuesday at 11. And we've added a new session Saturdays at 2 a.m. Pacific time. That's kind of our international time slot or, I don't know, the insomniac <laughs> time slot if you are in Pacific time. But really can't sleep at night and would love to hear your script or someone else's script read out loud. It comes with the feedback from the community and ideas from other people that you can ask for a specific focus of feedback if you want to. Some folks find that really useful. And as a member, you get script coins, which you can spend on these table readings of your own work if you want to. So you can join scriptcamp.net to sign up for it to be an unlimited member and get access to every class on every server. Or you can purchase a course on its own if you want to. The first couple, like I mentioned, are going to be free, so you're free to stick with this one and the week one class all the way through the end if you want. Um, but if you plan to sign up and have not yet done so, you can let us know in the chat. There should be a poll. If you scroll up just a little bit, you'll find a bunch of blue numbers you can click on that indicate if you are interested in an upcoming boot camp and we can help you get signed up or give you more info or answer any questions you have. Okay, let's go into ground rules. <coughs> So for the purposes of this course and all courses, I recommend the first thing you do is put aside any dream projects that you have that you're like, I have to get this one thing written because it's super important to me, um, or I have to get it right, or I have to give do justice to this real story, or I have to tell my own life story, or I have to write for this important social cause, or I have something I've been working on since I was a kid. I would not recommend picking any of those projects to write in an eight week span because you should sort of approach this like you are going to the gym and running laps to get better at writing features because your first feature is probably not gonna be all that good. Just in the same way that your first ever painting you did as a kid would probably not be something we'd hang in a museum right away. And if you kind of think a little bit ahead to the whole production process and everything, strikes notwithstanding, you have to understand that making a feature is creating a multi-million dollar company um, that will employ more than 100 people for months to up to a year and various stages of pre to production to post production to marketing and advertising and all these other things. And it's not like a small feat to write a movie. It's a, it's creating a company. So that said, we don't exactly like it's not super common for your first couple scripts to be anywhere near the level of quality that is expected because the bar is very, very, very high. And you need to be exceedingly creative and good at taking notes and revising and all these things. It's so many jobs in one. So I would put away the idea that maybe this might be the script that sells or gets you an agent or gets you a manager or um, moves your career forward in a super strong way. And you should look at this more as like a series of, uh, or like um, a long process of gradual improvement where every script you will get better and you will learn new techniques and you will get better at these other skills like notes and revising and feedback and all these other things. It's all the different jobs that combine to make this very complicated, difficult craft. 
and you should just be a little less attached to every script that you write, at least while you're getting going. You have to write something that excites you and that is fun, but try not to pick something that you need to make it perfect, because this, this problem of it needs to be perfect or it feels wrong to me is one of the biggest reasons people abandon the script halfway through, or they say, I'm still stuck, I'm trying to figure it out, and they spend years on it, and then they never finish, and it drives them crazy. We need to get into the pattern of being able to write and execute as high quality scripts as you can within a somewhat consistent and replicable time frame. Um, it doesn't mean they have to be masterpieces. As high quality as you can, meaning you're trying new stuff every time, you're learning, you're attempting new techniques, you're challenging yourself, and at the end of the day, you're trying to just keep yourself writing stuff, because if you're doing the three main things to improve as a writer, if you are reading, writing, and moving on, then that is the best thing you can do to move forward and advance. If something's stopping you from doing any of those things, then that is the first impediment to tackle in moving this potential career forward. So try to pick something that is just funny or fun, or try to maybe pick some crazy mashup of concepts that you've never seen before. Maybe you're like, I really like political thrillers and I love sci-fi. Have they ever done a political thriller set in space? I guess kind of certain, certain parts of The Expanse are sort of like that. Um, but so maybe not. Maybe that would just be cool to try out, even if it doesn't work, even if it you goof it up terribly. It at least was just an amusement that kept you entertained and kept you bringing back. And maybe you'll find something in it that really kind of draws you to that story and makes it very personal for you or something. But you shouldn't only be able to write things because they are deeply personal to you. For the most part, if you want to be a working like studio kind of screenwriter, if you want to be a writer director who re only makes a movie every couple of years, maybe that is more uh, aligning with your goals. But for the most part, to get to the point where you're able to write really good movies takes writing a lot of movies. And so you're just going to have to get through a bunch of the bad ones. So get used to sharing your work, at, even at early stages with me and with everybody else. You should be less precious about ideas, especially if you want to work in TV, at which point you're going to be working in writer's rooms of people that will just tear your idea apart in seconds. And it, you'll have to just smile and move on all, all the time. So get used to this collaborative uh, kind of writing where you're always taking and internalizing feedback and understanding that feedback is not necessarily telling you you have to do this you're in trouble if you don't change this about your script it's just someone giving you their best good faith advice on how to make that story stronger in some way and you can take what you want and you cannot take what you don't want ultimately it's your career so um try to stick with those ideas that are fun and hooky and exciting and keep you coming back week by week and that you're going to be able to finish within eight weeks and then pretty much move on to the next one also, if you're going to be in classes after the intro, so after the free, free ones, then you should change your name to a real name from, you know, not a, it should not be a screen name. You should use your real name. You're not using, you know, Hello Kitty 420 as your name in the industry. So I would get used to using your actual name. Um, and, uh, or at least if you have some professional pseudonym or nickname or something like that, use that instead. But for now, you don't have to change that. You're fine to use screen names for the intro classes. So um, I would avoid true stories, anthologies, or adaptations, because those are all things that are going to require more pre-writing, more work and research up top. So to that same extent, you probably don't want to write a historical unless you're already familiar with that time period, or maybe all you watch is westerns or something like that, so you, can, you know it like the back of your hand and wouldn't have to put in the extra work into the social and cultural historical context and dialogue and all these other things. So you want to pick something that you can reasonably execute within four weeks of planning, and four weeks of writing. Don't do time travel. Just trust me. Just don't. <laughs> and every time someone takes this as a challenge, and every time someone attempts to write a time travel script in a boot camp, they are not able to complete it, and they get too lost and confused in the paradoxes and, and the things that they forgot and the things they missed, and you, you just don't want the majority of the notes that you get on a script to be on logic issues and on paradoxes. Uh, so just don't do time travel. Um, and then also just be careful of really tricky stuff to get things things to, things that are tricky to get right on the page. Things like multiple copies of the same characters, body switching stories, anything with parallel universes or multiverses, and any script that really relies on complex sequences of flashbacks or alternate timelines. Um, those are going to trip even ex highly experienced writers up on the page. And if it's in your first couple scripts, you, again, just don't want the majority of notes you get to be on you don't want the main note you get to be, wait, what? <laughs> you want the notes to be on specific things like dialogue or character or certain scenes. You don't want the audience just to be like turning back pages, desperately trying to figure out 
what happens. But yeah, it's just a good time to take a big swing, write something weird or funny or fun while just building these basic fundamentals. So feel free at this point, you can tell us who you are, what you're hoping to write or what you're hoping to learn. You can raise a hand and speak on the mic if you want, or you can just sway in in the text chat and I'll read a couple of them out loud. Um, we would uh, be glad to hear from you guys. So feel free to tell us what are your goals? What have you written before? What are you hoping to write? Anything you'd like to share? Looks like we have a raised hand. Go ahead. Uh, hi, Connor. Hi, everyone. Can you hi. hear me all right? Yep, we hear you just fine. Go ahead. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so um, my goals with this book count in particular, I was I came in thinking, oh, I'm going to write this idea that been, that's been circling right in my head for you know a couple of years. Um, but then he said, don't do that. Try something new. Try something wacky. Now I'm finding myself, okay, I have to really take it all the way back to the drawing board, really, and uh, kind of drum up a new... Um, a new idea but um, in terms of what I've written so far um, I've written a um, kind of like thriller with supernatural elements a full feature length film and then a couple of short films and some short stories in prose form so that's kind of the gist of it but I'm uh, yeah really glad to be here and uh, thank you for doing this class sure thanks so much and uh, just uh, on the note of the idea that you're really excited about and the thing that you've been thinking about for a long time, I would say that just because of the time frame of the class, because it only takes place in eight weeks, if it's something like the more passionate you are about it, the more okay you have to be with, well, in a boot camp, I wasn't able to accomplish all of what I wanted to accomplish with that. So if it's like, I guess I would just have the, this is not just talking to you, but just to everybody, just have the confidence that you'll be able to come up with more ideas. Like you're, the goal of being a writer is to become this generator of unlimited ideas. So you're not actually stuck with the good ideas that you had before, you'll always have more of them. And the more you sharpen and develop your skills, the more you will work on the skill of coming up with new things as well. So you can totally try the thing you were excited about and the thing that you had in your mind if you want to, but just, I guess it, it helps somehow. I've noticed throughout years of doing these that it helps people to not be too stuck on something that they're like, well, it has to be perfect the whole time. And that just tends to be the case if it's something that someone's had in their mind for many years. But then again, maybe you're, maybe that, that's not the case with you. Maybe you're like, oh, I can try this thing I was excited about, and then I'll have a new idea right after that. So totally up to you how you want to approach it, but that's just my advice from having taught these before. No, I do appreciate that. And uh, I, think, I think you're right. I think if you always force yourself to kind of generate more new ideas, then the better you get at it, the more you'll be able to find those ideas that really stick and that really are the, the you know, the, the gold ones rather than, you know, the copper or the bronze ones. So, yeah, no, I do really appreciate that. So I'm going to go back to the drawing board and come up with a new concept. Awesome. Great to hear. Thanks so much for Thank waiting in. Yeah, when you're trying to be a feature screenwriter, you're not being hired necessarily because you wrote one. You're not being repped and you're not being <clears throat> hired for a job necessarily based on one thing that you wrote. People are looking for writers to sign and to hire. And writers are people that if you give them two cups of milk and um, a pear, then they can come up with a story about two cups of milk and a pear. I mean, if you look at the state of the feature world right now, I have my friends that are pitching on feature comedies are pitching on things based on snack foods, cereals, and board games. And it's like you have to kind of be able to work with what you've got or work with what you're given and come up with new working stories. It's not about having written one thing that is like going to uh, make your make your entire career. Like it usually is one thing that you will get signed based on, but that thing usually won't get made. And then from there, it's going to be based on your skills at things like pitching and combining concepts and figuring out what is high concept and how can I generate that in a replicable way? Those are the skills that are going to allow you to be employed as a Hollywood writer long term. We have a few other comments from the chat. Becky says, I'm hoping to get a first draft of a low budget thriller set in one location that I could potentially film in the future. Great. Yeah, good. So if you're thinking of something you'd want to actually make, then best to make it as low budget as possible. And this is something we have to worry about in features much more than you have to worry about writing books and things like this is number of locations, number of characters, and complexity of special effects. So if you if your aspiration is to make something yourself or to have it be low budget enough that you could query it and have it be actually made so that would usually be low budget horror thriller or 
I people some people say rom coms are coming back. So if you've got like a really great uh, high concept but low budget rom com, go for it. Something along those lines, then um, you're in good shape, and those things are more likely to get made than if you're writing superhero features. Zero tells us, I'm pretty new, just want to write my first feature to understand what it's like. I've only written shorts. Great. Um, this is the place to be. Thanks for coming by, Zero. We have a comment from Hemingway who says, Friends gave me the idea for a Fear and Loathing by Dante's Inferno movie. I wanted to see if that's actually doable. Wow, that sounds really trippy, and I have no idea what that would exactly be. Like a road trip through the different layers of hell? That sounds cool. I'm down. Um, that definitely runs the risk of being really, really crazy and abstract, but then again, maybe that's the thing that would keep you interested and excited throughout writing the whole 100 pages of that. So go for it. That sounds interesting. If anyone else would like to weigh in, um, then you can feel free to do so in the chat, and I'll read off your comments when we get them. For now, I think we'll move forward. Let me just check the stream chat from the various social medias. Okay, no comments in there. It feels like every time I don't check the stream chat, then there's a bunch of comments in it, and then every time I do, there's nothing in it, but that's just like <laughs> life, isn't it? Okay, um, let's continue. So, you're going to write a script in eight weeks, if you're following along with this class. So, yeah, if you're here today, you actually have an extra week. Um, will the script be any good? No, um, because first drafts usually just aren't good in that sense of it's a finished, viable, sellable product that will get a lot of acclaim right off the bat. Most scripts just are not like that after a first draft. Most scripts don't get like that even after several drafts. But that aside, you really have to just move beyond this idea that any individual script needs to be good for it to have been worthwhile, for it to be worth finishing. Like, this is, again, kind of a big uh, stumbling block for a lot of people that are halfway through the script and they're like, well, I'm looking at it and I can tell it's not good, so why would I finish it? Well, because it's not going to be good unless it can be finished first, and then you would get notes and revise and rework, and it's it's just usually not going to be good right out of the gate. And it's usually not going to be good even after several revisions, because it's one of your first scripts. And if that is a huge problem for you, then this is like maybe just not even the type of writing to be doing, because... This is the, the thing about screenwriting in comparison to other forms of writing is that it, it's pretty quick to write a scene or to write a page. There's, it's like deliberately sparse and you don't really go into as much detail, context, internal world of characters or any of these things that you would in a book that take up quite a lot of the page space. You are writing something that fundamentally can be done very quickly. Like you can write a scene for a movie in five minutes um, without having to necessarily uh, do tons of research or spend a long time on any one element of that. But because of that, the difficulties are going to come more in things like, which scenes do I choose? It's not going to come in like, did I write that scene perfectly? Because if you just choose the wrong scenes or the wrong premise in the first place, it doesn't matter how well you write those scenes. So like, there's a lot of difficulties that are just going to require you that like they require the 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 analysis skills from having read and written a lot of scripts before you can even see what you're doing right or wrong necessarily and that requires just finishing things and moving on to the next one and also reading a lot there's no getting over this which a lot of folks seem to almost think is like optional or is like uh, they, they don't really need to do this but you have to read scripts and to the extent that I recommend you read three of them every single week because every feature bootcamp meeting we ask what scripts have you read this week what do you want to tell us about it's not a quiz there's not a right answer. <clears throat> it's just to make sure you are reading and paying attention and gaining something from this because if you don't read great movies, you're not going to write great movies. It's just not in the cards. And read other stuff too. You know, you can read average or bad movies too. All that is useful and instructive. You just must be reading. So idea to first draft in eight weeks. We have five major steps. First one is the log line. So I guess the step zero is just deciding on things like what is the genre and very general idea of what I want to do. So that is what you should be working on right now, um, thinking of what kind of movie do I want to write. And then the first step is the logline. So we're going to try to express the idea in one sentence. And that one sentence does a lot of heavy lifting and does a lot of work and is pretty important even at this early stage because it's going to help you set your goals and aims and expectations early on and also guide your process of writing the rest of the movie because a well-written logline will do a couple things. One, it will act as like a structural blueprint where you can tell immediately what page, certain if you know what to look for and you know kind of how the template works, 
then you can look at a great logline and immediately tell where the, some of the major points of your script are going to fall and use that as a head start jump you know boost into the outlining process where you have like the four or five generally most important scenes already on the board to begin with so just a well-written logline will help you with structure in every way second of all it acts as like a piece of marketing and it expresses what the idea is in such a way that you'd communicate it to somebody else and then therefore they would know first of all does that sound any good or does that sound like something i would want to read develop or make um and that's just important to be able to have a way of explaining what it is that you have made for other people So um, step two is the sketchbook. So we can make that today as well. That's going to be just a blank document where you're going to keep all your research, ideas, inspirations, links to videos, articles, whatever it is that's gonna help you kind of figure out the world of your story, the rules of your story, and also just start to put down ideas. So things like you, you know you have to have one funny joke in there, you have to have one character in there, you know you have to have this. So this is where you're gonna put down everything that you have and you're gonna use it to gather these ideas and keep track of them moving forward and you there's really no limit to how the sketchbook should look or what should go in it there's a couple questions that you're going to want to answer at the very top of it that we will get into in just a slide or two so we're going to make that today in a slide in like the next slide i'll uh, just give you a couple more instructions on how to make that already and start working um let me just quickly go over the rest of the steps though so after sketchbook we move from the uh gathering of ideas into the organizing of those ideas into story beats the story beat synopsis is going to be essentially the major scenes of your script that are arranged in the, the general order and shape that they should with the structural headings written above each section so we know where we are in the movie, we know what the midpoint is, we know what the act breaks are, we know what happens in the premise scenes in this sort of bullet point list format where you don't have to go into way too much detail, you can have a couple placeholders and things left out, and you don't you can just have a couple scenes in there that are like insert exciting premise scene here if you need to. And then the next step is expanding and filling in the gaps in that into scene cards where you're going to take that story beat outline and add more detail and figure out specifically what happens in each scene. You're going to come up with a little title for each scene and also estimate the pages that it's going to take place on. And we're really going to use this extreme architect method to plan out every single page of the story before you start writing. Therefore, we're kind of breaking this issue of uh, figuring out what happens away from executing it on the page. And the more that you separate those two things, the easier it becomes to avoid getting stuck or hitting w what some people call writer's block as you are in the middle of the script because you'll never not know what's supposed to happen next. And if you just can't get through a certain scene for some reason, you can always just move ahead to the next one or write a later scene because you have the whole thing planned out beginning to end. If you hate outlining and you hate doing this, well, first of all, if you hate outlining in general, screenwriting and especially TV writing might not be the place to start. You should probably try books instead and maybe try that approach and maybe break into publishing first and see if you really like that because discovery writing a feature film is exceedingly difficult. Movies are so structured and the runtime is limited and it has to be essentially between 90 and 120 pages long, whereas a book can be hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pages long with no problem there um we have to make this thing fit into a certain runtime there's expectations that come with modern specs and genre different genres have different expectations of pacing and when certain things should happen and you need to know what the expectations of your genre are and what has been done before and what has been done recently like anytime a genre gets kind of shaken up it sometimes changes the rules a little bit and we can't always go back to how things were before just like it was pretty difficult to make serious spy movies for a while after Austin Powers came out because it kind of tore apart the genre or serious slasher movies after Scream came out. Things like this, the, you have to be aware of what has come out recently. You need to be reading specs, reading things that are on big lists like Blacklist, Hitlist, and um, Bloodlist, Young and Hungry List, all these things so that you can keep kind of abreast of what has been done recently, what the trends are, and how you can both utilize and interact with those trends while also sort of maybe subverting them or coming up with something new or adding your own spin to these things also. These are all pretty advanced techniques and things to think about for later in your screenwriting life. If you haven't written a script before, don't worry about any of that originality or marketability stuff yet. You really just have to kind of write five scripts before you will start to get your find your feet and understand what you're doing and like get better at this. So don't really worry about if your idea is original or fantastic enough until you've written a couple scripts. Um, we are also open to rewrites, but I think that the rewrite process is so sort of different that I would recommend if you're going into a rewrite to probably approach it as if it is a brand new script from, that you're doing a page one um, fr from scratch rewrite on. 
and again not really approach it as an adaptation or an next draft but approach it as a brand new project um the steps for rewriting i don't want to go into right now but i'll just bring up on screen for a moment you can see we have a whole separate sort of process for when you have are going through repeated other dra you know successive drafts of any individual project it involves re-outlining gathering notes making a plan and a revision guide then rewriting and doing extra passes for things like character dialogue or any individual element that still needs work we won't go way too into that today just because we have so much else to do but you should just know there is plenty of there's plenty of other script camp classes that cover things like rewrites notes feedback and every other element of this process um, so yeah, your, your, your goal here is to become this generator of unlimited ideas and develop the skills necessary to execute them consistently on a pretty quick time frame. So write a feature between eight and 12 weeks if you can, and with a high level of quality as you can manage. The goal is not to coach you into writing a great script as a result of this course, or a script that will go anywhere, or will get you anything, or will sell, or will there will be any tangible result from beyond just your own gradual improvement. It takes many years of writing many scripts to get to that level. So this is work. This takes a long time. No one starts good at it. There's a couple myths and assumptions that people have about being a working screenwriter. I don't think we have to go through all of this just because I've done so many of these in the past. You can find plenty of recordings of this. And um, I think we're all just tired of hearing about some of these by now. But I will just tackle a few of the big ones here. The first thing is you don't need a degree or film school, internship, classes, workshops film studies degree, or even courses like this to be a screenwriter. You don't need any of those things. Um, some of those things can help, and you can ask always, like some folks might have various good or bad experiences with those things that you can feel free to ask about. But uh, at the end of the day, this is a matter of putting in the work. And uh, it's a long road to go down, where you have to sort of, if you want to do this professionally for a living, you have to understand there's about 2,000 people that do that in the world. Um, or in Hollywood, at least. I'm not sure about the broader world. There's about 2,000 working paid writers. Um, and uh, the path there is not super set in stone. There's a lot of variations. Things are changing all the time. Many people have different routes that they have taken. Um, though you should... And, and so like to that end, you should note that networking is important. Although you can't really network in the unscripted world to make connections in scripted, which I tried to sort of do when I first moved to Hollywood. But it turns out they don't have a lot of cross-contamination, and just because you work in reality shows or unscripted shows in whatever form for a few years does not mean eventually you will meet someone who can get, get like rep you as a screenwriter or do anything in this sort of uh, uh, scripted world. So there is just not that much crossover there, and sometimes a bit of animosity there between the two of them, so careful with that. Uh, you So yeah, you don't need any particular course or degree or anything like that. Networking is important just because in order to get those opportunities to have somebody potentially read you that would be able to help you at all, uh, you need to meet the right people. And, but then, of course, to begin with, the best way to meet the right people is usually by having an exemplary product. And unless you do, then it doesn't matter how many people you network with because they're going to see that you are clearly an amateur who has no idea what you're doing and there's no way we're going to make a multi-million dollar company based on your blueprints for this story. There's a lot more that goes into this beyond just, is it a good story? Um, and the only factor that we can control is essentially, is it a good story? So there's that internal sort of weird, one of the many contradictions and paradoxes of this are that like your control of this only goes so far. And after that, it is up to luck. But then within that, you have to sort of make these opportunities where the luck can happen, meaning you have to be in LA pretty much uh, to uh, especially work in TV, um, not in features necessarily. If you have a fantastic really clear voice and some really great samples going around and um, maybe even succeed in your local industry outside of America then it's still possible to work in features and maybe coming to LA a couple times a year but to work in TV especially where things like the lowest ranking position um, the you know office PAs or writers PAs jobs are super hard to get and based on essentially who you know because they're not posted publicly you basically do need to be in LA going to parties and meeting with assistants and coordinators and these other people who work in Hollywood but are not maybe at the stage yet where they can do anything that would be able to move your career forward and you just need to sort of be building those relationships in order to um, be able to advance. So it's not really 
an introvert friendly career unfortunately because most writers are actually introverts if you're an extreme introvert i would go into writing books instead where you really only have to coordinate with your lit agent and a publisher and maybe one or two others um in order to get a work done and then you are given so much more privacy and ability to work on your own and trust and respect and all these things we are not given trust or respect as screenwriters so you will be have people looking over your shoulder the entire time giving you notes constantly sometimes that will be good and sometimes that will be bizarrely mind-numbingly stupid and you'll have to find a way to incorporate them into the story anyway so you're a hired gun but the the benefit is that although you can't necessarily get rich quick doing this this does pay significantly more than writing books does um where even and like a ten thousand dollar advance is considered or has been considered like pretty much the norm for a while and that is i've worked on tv shows where that was considered insultingly low to write one episode of a tv show before so um we get paid more than novelists and playwrights and the trade-off is that you have to follow a lot more instructions you're working for a lot more bosses Um, so I'm going to skip over the rest of this stuff because, yeah, it's hard. You get it. The, you get it. It's extremely expensive to live in L.A. We're striking right now over a lot of these conditions that make it so difficult. Um, so we don't have to linger on them too long. Let's just maybe go over some of these uh, basic steps to being a feature writer. This first step is get really, really good at writing movies. So coming to classes and courses and stuff like this is a good step or something. to, to It's like a good angle of approach towards doing this. It's not the only way. Um, and it's not a requirement, absolutely, but if you are looking for direction, looking for structure and deadlines, and to have questions answered, and to have guidance and a community and all these things, then places like Script Camp can be great. Um, also, we're a lot cheaper than film school. And then I say step two is go back and actually do step one, because almost everyone thinks they did step one before they really did step one. I mean, I was in college trying to query already. I had written like five or six features at the end of college. I was like, time to move to L.A., but in reality, I didn't get signed in for two years after that. I didn't get signed until 2017. Um, so this requires not just getting really good at writing scripts, but also the sort of humility to say that I have more to learn. I can improve more. I need to keep writing to keep honing that craft and make this as razor sharp and undeniable as it can possibly be and to always be striving for improvement at every stage and always be studying like the more books you read and podcasts you listen to and movies you break down and you're like you know writing down the structure and taking notes and really paying attention um the more you will improve like the more you st it's almost dumb to say but the more you study and tr the harder you work the more results you will get out of this no one really stumbles into accidentally being a hit feature writer so this takes a significant investment of your life <laughs> just something to be aware of um, let's go over the other steps. Step three, you want to write out, uh, make a portfolio of three to five unique and undeniably incredible scripts. Um, and in the feature world, you can have a, you can have like a pilot in there. You can have a play in there if you really want to. The plays are going to be better for like TV. Um, you can have a couple other things in the portfolio, but you have to have several really, really good features that you're ready to send that are completely, you know, you own the rights to the material. You're not, you're not writing fan fiction you're writing original brand new stories and then you are able to link those to people in a non-crazy way you're not trying to just mass mail those out to the general public you're not going to steven spielberg's house and knocking on his door and stuff like that the portfolio is something that you are able to draw from and send usually one script at a time from um, as you're able to catch someone's interest and get their permission to send it so you do have to sort of Keep in mind the etiquettes and all the rules that sort of go into when can or should you be sharing or sending scripts. But then at the end of the day, you're going to want to use that to try to get repped by a manager, which is almost always the first step for breaking into feature writing nowadays, is not with an agent, because an agent usually only it becomes involved when you have a sale on the table. And unless you have the manager first, you're most likely not going to get to the sale part. So you're going to want to get rep by a manager. You can do this in a couple ways. The basics are you have to get their attention, meaning meet them at networking events and parties and things like this, or talk, to become friends with their assistants. And eventually you're going to be able to maybe get that assistant to give a script to their manager once they are convinced that it will be to your benefit and their benefit. You want to place highly in contests and fellowships, um, the reputable ones that people care about. 
the way to assess if people, different reps, care about a contest or fellowship, the best way is if they are a judge on that contest or fellowship. So you know that they care about that one if they are, so you can usually contact the judges afterwards. And if you place highly enough, you can sometimes get their permission to send you to send them something else. So you have to have multiple other scripts ready to go. And ideally, they are in a similar sort of genre because if someone was really interested by one of your horror scripts, and then the other one you have to send them is a rom-com, they may be like, this writer doesn't seem very focused. I don't really know if I can rep somebody who is trying to do both of those things at once. So it should kind of be in the same general sort of arena. So like, I guess maybe we could separate it out on the dark light spectrum or something. So on the darker end, we'd have horror and thriller, action. That's what I write. I write horror, thriller, ac action, and some sci-fi. And then maybe on the other end, we'd have things like comedy, romance, musicals, um, and dramedies, things like that. Drama can kind of go either way. It's sort of in the middle and can be either darker or lighter. But um, I would just try to target your um, querying and portfolios and stuff to if you to like if you have something else that, that is also in a somewhat related or linked genre that you can also send to that person. It's going to be better than if it is something radically different for the most part. Then once you get this manager, well, of course, you have to get, take the meeting or multiple meetings with the manager before they're going to agree to sign you. But you're going to work with that manager to either get a writing assignment on something, meaning you're going to have to pitch on properties that you are able to, meaning the manager is going to be able to get you in the room on things like, oh, they're doing a movie based on, uh, you know, shoots and ladders. Um, so you can go in and pitch your take on shoots and ladders that you won't get paid for, of course. And then uh, you do that for quite a while until you hopefully eventually get one. Or you're going to be developing a spec with your manager that they can take out. A spec being a script that you were not commissioned to write, something original and brand new. Um, although at this point, the manager is kind of your friend, kind of your coworker, and kind of your boss. It's sort of a weird uh, juxtaposition of different roles that you do. They have to be really happy with the script before they're going to send it out and confident in it. And so that means that you have to do what they say, more or less. And I would just recommend not picking any battles. Like uh, here and there, you can push back on something if you really need to. But at this point, your job is just get past your your new gatekeeper and get them happy with the script no matter what it takes. Even if you think it's really stupid by the end. Um, you need them happy with it before they will send it out. And then once they do send it out, then you will essentially be able to take a bunch of generals. Generals are general meetings that are not necessarily a production company wanting to make that script, but just being impressed by it and wanting to meet you, at which point you'll go on something they call a water bottle tour, um, where you will, and these used to be all in person, and I've actually done two of these. I've done one pre-COVID and one post, and one during COVID, so uh, there was a lot of, they were pretty different. I actually really prefer the in-person stuff. You actually get a water bottle. Um, and I like going into all the different companies and meeting, like I met at some of my favorite places and it was just really fun and enjoyable and if you have basic social skills they will be impressed it sort of feels like uh meeting your friend's parents and you just like shake the dad's hand and say thanks please and thank you to the mom and they're like wow so impressive so polite <laughs> and then it's like oh, i just kind of was not weird and that's all it took but it's easy to impress people in general because they already are impressed with your script so if you then have kind of cool and fun ideas you're nice to talk to you aren't annoying you will earn major points there so it's worth going on those water bottle tours and just proving that you're normal. And then from there, sometimes something will spark in a general meeting that they will be, they'll contact you afterwards and be like, hey, we should totally develop this thing. Usually that won't happen. And they'll sort of dangle that in front of you and they'll be like, yeah, we'll let you know if we have any open writing assignments that they just won't ever contact you about. So you have to stay pretty persistent and keep writing new things and taking the initiative. And sometimes finding that balance between listening to what your manager has to say and their advice and guidance and sometimes you will have a different idea and have to try something else so it doesn't get exponentially easier once you have a manager it just changes and becomes a different relationship and the whole time you need to still be writing generating ideas generating content and working hard like the work doesn't end when you get signed it actually sort of increases and you get less creativity and freedom than you had before so by being in the stage of just learning how to write you can write whatever you want and it's actually kind of a great place to be in I'm jealous. I wish I could still just sort of write whatever I wanted at any time. But once you enter the more like the later career phase of this, you have to be choosing ideas based on like what is most likely to sell, 
what are my reps going to want from me? What would they be the most happy with? What am I going to have the least fights about them with? It's sort of an adversarial relationship with your manager to the extent that you have to get them to approve your thing before they will do anything with your script. If they're not happy with it, they just won't. So you have to please them and, and like j jump that hurdle of, uh, you know, whatever obstacles they're putting in front of you, whatever, like whatever you have to do to get them to like it, you have to do. Um, and then you will keep doing those past couple steps 5,000 trillion times as various things fall apart for years. Um, and then, or maybe you'll get lucky and it won't be years. Maybe this, I'm just projecting my own experience out of this, but this is, in my case, uh, have, you know, still am, are, am doing these steps every day and there's multiple strikes going on right now. So you have picked a strange time to break into screenwriting, but here we are. In any case, eventually you will be able to sell a feature at which point you will be eligible to join the Writers Guild after you pay your pretty significant dues. Uh, sorry, guilt there. A lot of money to ask of aspiring writers. Um, and then once you do that, you will be entitled to guild minimums, and you cannot be paid less than the pretty significant amounts that the guild sets for you. Um, and you will have health care, which is such a great benefit, <laughs> of course. And uh, you will be able to... You, you're, once you join the guild, your status as a writer goes up like 10,000 trillion times. I'm not in the guild, personally. Um, and once you are, again, the work doesn't get significantly easier. It still is hard, but at least you have certain protections in place that were not there before. And you have kind of like, I wouldn't say made it because making it is not really a thing in Hollywood in the way that people think that it is. But you get a letter from the WGA that's like, you should tell your parents about this. If that indicates to you how, like how rare and difficult it is to get into the Writers Guild and how many years it takes and how many skills it takes and how much work that it takes. At this point, I'm just expecting everyone to just leave because I'm just making this sound so miserable. But that's why you come to the Week Zero class to get the, the straight shooting on the challenges and difficulties of doing this. And if you hear all these things and you're still interested, you're not dissuaded by these things, then I think you're in the right place. If you hear all these things and you're like, oh, God, this sounds miserable, then I would try playwriting or novel writing or any of these things where the work will be treated with more gravitas and seriousness and you'll be given more respect it won't be you won't be paid as much but you will have much greater control and artistic freedom in other forms of writing besides screenwriting okay there's a bunch of bummers uh, a bunch of harsh truths and things like that it's difficult to get better at this getting good feedback is hard and it's difficult to gauge where your skill level is and where it needs to be and a script is a really long document that it's difficult to get someone to read all of in the first place and it's also very difficult to discern a script's quality just based on a quick glance so you can only really get the best feedback from people who know what they're talking about and people who know what they're talking about rarely have time to read your script and rarely will do it for free so these are just some of the basic challenges and, and i would say the reasons to join a community like this where you will find lots of other people who are maybe closer to your level or just above it or or we have some pro writers on the on the server too who give feedback and run workshops and genre groups and all these things so like you have to just kind of start meeting people that are trying to do the same thing as you. Um, last, last from this section, I'll just wrap up by saying you're making a long road of bricks. You don't have to worry about whether every individual brick is a masterpiece or even particularly good because you just have a bunch more to get to. So let's make sketchbooks. So open Google Docs and you're going to make a new document, just a blank completely blank document. You're going to call it name of movie sketchbook, or if you don't have a name for the movie yet, you could just call it, you know, feature sketchbook. And at the top, you're going to make a little list, title, genre, logline, and comps. These are the essential ingredients moving forward as you're going to figure out what your story is on the most baseline level, the most basic ground level concrete, uh, whatever we call it, the bedrock of your story. And then from there, you're going to be able to move into gathering ideas for scenes, characters, dialogue, moments, uh, like a finale is a good thing to start planning. So you're going to start filling out the sketchbook today, right now, with all of your ideas for this one particular movie. Or if you have a couple that you're, that you're deciding from, maybe the first page of your sketchbook will be called, you know, my three different ideas. And you're, you're going to try to settle on those by next week, if you can. So you're trying to figure out what you're writing this week. And if you already know what you're writing, then you can start filling in these other things too. 
you can fill out your sketchbook more thoroughly if you already have a sense of what it is that you're writing. Okay, so everybody should go ahead and do that. And also, I recommend just keeping the sketchbook open in every class and being able to see it, add stuff to it, delete stuff from it. Um, you rarely need to delete anything from a sketchbook, but you can be modifying it and writing down questions that you have, problems that you're encountering, areas of interest that you have related to your topic, things to remind yourself to research later. You should just always be filling out and working in the sketchbook as the class is going on. I recommend doing that rather than watching, you know, YouTube and another tab. So fill out these things, title, genre, logline, and comps. We're gonna go more into what each of those means and how they work in just a second. Um, so we will, actually let's not start with logline, let's start with, do I have a genre slide? In the TV class I do, I guess I don't have just a genre slide of features, that seems like I definitely should. So. Um, let me just leave it on this for now, and I'll just go over some of those basics. So to begin with, we had title. You don't have to have a title right away. If you have a great title, though, sometimes everything else can stem from that very naturally. So for some ideas, it's like, well, of course that's the, what the title is. What else could it possibly be called? Think of a movie like Oppenheimer, right? It's like, well, what else would you call this? The Destroyer of Worlds? I don't know. Like, I guess there's other things you could call it. But a biopic, the rules of the biopic is usually the title is just the person's name. Um, not always. There's exceptions like Rocket Man or Blonde or things like this. But the, uh, like, it's totally fine to just have a biopic that is, the name is just Lincoln, you know? Uh, so no issue there. That, of course, would probably be the title of a movie about Abraham Lincoln. Um and then once, so you don't have to have the title though, if you are, are still deciding or you have no idea what it could be, you can leave it blank. Genre is that next important thing to nail down. Most of the time I would be starting with this and then starting with, I wanna write a movie of X genre and then trying to think of premises within that rather than coming up with a bunch of premises and then trying to fit them into various genres just because genres just come with such a clear set of expectations to them that I would start with something you're familiar with something you know how it works. Don't write a genre that you've never seen or watched before because you will have no idea what's been done. You'll have no idea what the expectations are or what beats to hit or things like that. So in terms of genre, if you don't know what to do, pick something you're a fan of. That's important to have that groundwork or have those basic rules in your mind. So you can fill that out. And when you're filling it out, try not to include way too many things. Uh, there are, you know, a bunch of genres out there and sometimes people start seeing elements of their movie in five different things and they're like well yeah it's like a sort of a western with sci-fi elements with uh, it's a fantasy romance comedy as well and it's like that just doesn't sound like anything um so limit yourself to two you can write a western with fantasy elements sure or you can write a romantic thriller okay whatever you want as long as it's two or less there's there's some example of that out there usually for almost everything and if there's not, maybe you'll be the first person to combine those things and that would be cool. But in any case, try not to make it sound like just a big soup of nothing. Try to just pick two, one or two very specific genres. Um, your options, let's go down the list of genres that we have. We have action and adventure, which some would say is a subcategory of action, but whatever. We have thriller, romance, comedy, drama, horror, Western, some people also say, is, a, is a, you know, it is obviously a separate genre in some ways, though it can fall into different kind of categories. We have, like, romantic Westerns, we have adventure Westerns, but sure, let's consider it a separate genre for now. What else do we have? Historical or biopic? Musical? Um, anyone, what have I not mentioned so far? Anybody want to throw something out? Did I cover them all? Maybe Paul has an idea. Go ahead, Paul. Uh, coming of age. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, coming of age will usually be comedy or drama, but I think some would consider it to be to have its own sort of like structural and also trope expectations with that. Yeah, I think that'll count. Thanks for that, Paul. Anything else I missed? There's a lot of subgenres out there, of course. Hemingway says, I don't know if I heard horror. I think I said horror, but considering that's most of what I write, I hope I said that, but you're right. Okay, so horror. 
Um, and uh, oh, mystery. There we go. That's one I did not say. Thank you. Yes, mystery. Absolutely a genre as well. Quite popular nowadays on TV. Okay, so some people will disagree about the specific nuances of different genres, or like, uh, is is crime just a, a subgenre of thriller or things like that? Um, and sometimes, you know, reasonable, intelligent people will disagree, and that's fine. Uh, but you should at least be as familiar as you can be with the genre that you're trying to write, just so you know what target you're aiming at, and you know what the cliches are, so you're not writing the most paint by numbers version of that genre possible. Though, if you're just getting started, it's not the worst thing in the world if you do. So, pick one or two genres. Logline is what we're going to talk about next, and that's going to be the one sentence expression of what the story is about. And then the last thing is comps. So, I'll just talk about comps before we move to logline. Comps are going to be two other movies that you're going to say, yours is kind of like these. It's this movie meets that movie. Do I have a slide on comps in. Here we go. So, you might think of it as the world of X in the style or approach of Y. That's not always going to work, and that's not a hard science. But that works pretty often. So, you might think, let's say, you want to do something like... Uh, let's do a possession movie set in a high school. So, our first thing... And let's make it a comedy, too. So, a, comedic, a horror comedy set in a high school. Okay, let's say it's going to be like uh, Booksmart meets um, Evil Dead. There we go. So we have the world of the first thing with this genre style or approach of the second thing. So in this one, I would imagine it's kind of a coming-of-age comedy, or it feels like one, and then one of the characters gets possessed by a demon, and maybe other characters do too. There's a lot of gore. So the comps are sort of telling us what to expect from the movie, like... If you are right, like that, and that that extends even within the intricacies of your genre itself. So if you pick, if you're writing a horror film, and your comps are The Others and The Sixth Sense, then we would expect that to not be a very gory uh, movie at the end of the day, because those two movies don't have any um, crazy murder scenes in them. Those are pretty subdued ghost-based thrillers that, or ghost-based horror thrillers that are more dramatic and more about suspense than they are about you know guys with chainsaws. Now, if you use the comps Texas Chainsaw Massacre and uh, Evil Dead, then people are going to assume that's a completely different type of horror movie. So you actually are painting the expectations in terms of tone, content, maybe even characters or genre, like um, specific nuances to the genre. Uh, so pick your comps carefully. You can have a couple different options for them that you maybe try out in different combinations. And you can write down a bunch of ideas for comps in your sketchbook. But ultimately, your idea is consider to have one or two little genre tags attached to it and two comps attached to it not we can't have more than two comps it's not philadelphia meets lord of the rings meets uh sleepless in seattle meets you know i just named the worst comps ever for a movie lord of the rings meets sleepless in seattle god what would that even be but you can see how it just gets confusing the more comps you add it it doesn't help us clarify the tone more it actually just makes us raise more questions and just makes it feel like a big blob of a blur in people's minds. Blob of a blur? What am I saying there? Okay, um, so hopefully that makes sense in terms of comps. They are going to tend to skew towards movies that are more recent and popular or in the sort of general zeitgeist or older movies that are more well-remembered. Like, you could comp something like Back to the Future or A Few Good Men, and people would know that because those are famous movies that people can quote from. Basically, if people can quote from it, then you can use it as a comp. Or if it's like there's some famous quote that people would know from it. It's fine to comp it. If there isn't a quote that people would know from it, then it should probably be from the last 10 to 20 years. And then, you, like, just keep in mind you're not earning points for someone not having heard of your comps. You actually just lose points. So your goal isn't to show off and impress people with your, you know, knowledge of obscure Romanian art house cinema that you're deciding to comp your movie to. That will just make them go, huh? So try not to show off. Don't pick trendy things that are over-comped or over-discussed in your genre either, if you can. If all of your comps are get out and die hard for horror and action, then uh, that's starting to feel a bit more generic. But then at the end of the day, if you're just getting started, it's not a terrible thing to write unoriginal movies. You just have to write the movies. Okay, so that's all I have on comps for now. I won't go way more into that today. We'll talk more about them next week. You can include the comps when you share your logline today if you want to. Or you can ask for suggestions for comps if you're not sure. 
basically you have to watch a lot of movies in order to know what comps to draw from. And if you don't watch a lot of movies, I would start doing that today. Get a subscription to, uh, you know, Netflix, Hulu, Shutter, something, and just watch a movie every day of the week if you can. So let's get into log lines, and I'm going to remind you that pretty soon we're going to be sharing early versions of your idea or log line, um, and going to be able to you're going to be able to post those in the chat. I'm going to call people to speak out loud and answer questions about their idea to um, give them feedback and also be able to so I can assess what they're trying to accomplish with this idea and stuff like that and give you suggestions. So you should be doing a couple things. One is trying to type out some some kind of early version of your idea. Um, and that would include a couple, like uh, whatever of these things that you can. So remember what we were putting onto the top of the sketchbook. We were filling out title, genre, logline, and comps. It, as many of those as you can include along with your logline, or you know, the better. So if you if you can if you have a title, include it when you share it. If you know the genre, of course, share it. That that one's pretty necessary. If you don't even know what genre it is. There's probably an issue with the idea, but it might still be okay. You can, if you just have the logline, that's fine. And if you can come up with comps in time to share them, then go ahead and do that too. But it's okay if they're just sort of a working version. It doesn't have to be the finalized version of any of these. We're at week zero, so don't worry about like... Some, sometimes people have the tendency to get a little defensive at the very start, and when they share something and they hear that, that it may not work, they're like, well, of course not, it's an early idea. And the answer is yes, <laughs> early ideas get more feedback than more developed ideas. So get used to that and try to get really used to hearing feedback because this is like probably the most essential skill to being a screenwriter as opposed to being a novelist or something like this is the ability to take and gracefully internalize feedback and not get defensive or to argue or fight back or any of these things. Um, that is an essential skill going into this and something that you have to practice constantly. Um, in any case, I would start filling these things out and in about 10 to 15 we will be sharing those ideas in the chat. I'm going to be pasting them into a Google Doc and giving feedback on them, marking them up, and asking you questions to clarify and help you with that. And also, just if you're like trying to decide between multiple ideas, that would be an okay time to share a few different ones, and I can we can pick one to work on if you're not sure. So let's go into log lines. Hopefully, everyone in the meantime will be on their sketchbook writing out that draft of your log line and filling out title, genre, and comps too. And when you share it, make sure you share all of these that you have. All right, let's get into logline. So this is the story central conflict distilled down into a sentence. And it's usually what people want when they ask the question, what is it about? Um, and you can start with an even simpler version if you want as well. You could, what is it about? Oh, it's about a guy trying to win a marathon. You can have that at the very basic level. Then if people like that, maybe they'll ask something like, oh, that sounds cool. What's the logline? And then from there, you'll have the logline should be some, the next thing that you share with them. It's going to be one sentence that tells us specifically who is this about, what are they trying to accomplish and why, and what's standing in the way, what is the opposition or the thing that the stakes, you know, the thing that threatens to happen if they don't succeed or if they don't act. So there's a lot of work for this sentence to do, and there's a lot of specific kind of goals it needs to achieve. One, we're trying to, first of all, tell us who is the protagonist. What is the inciting incident? So what is the thing that kicks the story off in the first place? <clears throat> what is the character's goal? And sort of that's going to tell us what's happening in Act 2 of the story, which is essential that we be able to kind of visualize um, because we say Act 2 is the movie. We have a sense also of what happens if they fail. So stakes are ticking clock. You know, that he must win the marathon or else he will be eaten by wolves. Like that would be pretty high life and death stakes doesn't have to be life and death stakes for whatever you're writing but they should be the highest possible stakes for your genre within the setup you've given us meaning that in a middle grade coming of age romance it might be like your girlfriend broke up with you might be the worst thing you can possibly think of or your friend won't talk to you anymore something like that might be the highest stakes so in order to save a friendship a character has to do something or something like that but in any case generally High, movies are about high stakes situations like otherwise it might not be a story best told as a movie um it might be a better short story or article or poem or song or something like that um but a movie is about usually the most important events of that person that your main character's life thus far not always there's exceptions to that it's not always the most important events of their life thus far 
but usually it is, and that's how we're looking at who is the protagonist, the person that has the, carries the most weight of this story, which is not to say that your protagonist can't sometimes in rare circumstances change halfway through, or from something like Psycho, right, where the protagonist just straight up changes. Um, or you can do something unusual like I have two equally weighted protagonists. That's called, that's called a two-hander. That's really difficult to pull off right, and I don't recommend trying to write a two-hander, but they exist. They are out there. The, there aren't really strict rules on what you can do in a movie. There's just observations based on what's worked before. And if you kind of go outside of the guidelines and you, what you do really doesn't work, then the first note you're almost certainly going to get is like, well, I, I think it's because you went outside of these guidelines. For instance, if you write a two-hander and it doesn't work at all, then most people would be like, well, have you considered just focusing on a single protagonist? Um, this is a very protagonist-based model of storytelling. The Western sort of storytelling structure is really centered on a single hero as the lead of the movie that everything else revolves around. And to some extent, that you are designing the entire story around with them as kind of the centerpiece in that web. So we are designing who's the villain. Okay, well, it's kind of someone that's the opposite of the hero or somebody that is designed specifically to exacerbate or draw into question the hero's flaws or their loyalty or their whatever they think is their strongest trait is the thing that the villain's going to propose to them is perhaps their greatest weakness and thus force the hero to kind of ideologically defend their position as they take on this villain or whatever. So and think of something like Skyfall, right, where it's like every single thing is designed directly to challenge Bond as a character and to, um, you know, attack him at all sides and force your character thus to justify their position in the world or to defend it or maybe to come to some new conclusion about who they are. So all these things are a little bit more advanced storytelling tactics and techniques and things related to dramatic argument and stuff like that, which if you're pretty early on and you're just like, I don't know what to do, I just need to write a movie, you don't need to worry way too much about that. I would just follow the fun. So a logline is supposed to highlight and underscore what's fun about this idea for us. Why would somebody want to read this? And in addition to, of course, answering these essential questions, it should just sound entertaining. And that is kind of hard to quantify and difficult to give the feedback on something that, like, this all works, but I just feel like I've seen it before, or it just feels like uh, not exciting or not interesting. So sometimes that might be the note. It may not be the biggest problem in the world if you just need to get some scripts down if it sounds like it's been done before or something like that. But the long line is just a place to show off why would someone spend their time on this? Why would sp someone spend an hour or more when they have a million things they could be doing, specifically just reading or experiencing my story? We have a question in the chat. If my log line is two sentences, is that okay? For now, for today, it's okay. But every time I see a log line that's two sentences, I do see that there are ways that it could be one sentence. And I think moving forward, you should try to condense it down to one, if at all possible. Occasionally, there will be a really complex premise that requires two. Uh, but even then, I almost always see ways that it could be one. So for now, it's fine. All right, so um, we've gone over the reasons for having a logline, serving as this kind of guide or compass for you moving forward in the script. As a marketing purpose too, it just persuades someone to read it because a better logline is probably a better story. And it also tells us who would be interested in the type of subject matter that you have to offer. Some people hate fantasy. And if something has elves or dwarves in it, they will literally not engage with it at all. Some people hate rom-coms, like me, for instance. I don't really like rom-coms, and if somebody, if I read a logline for one, I might say, that sounds like it accomplishes the goals that it sets out to accomplish, but I would not like to read it. So your logline's important, and it carries a lot of weight. Don't drive yourself crazy with it. You can write a couple versions of it, or like a couple attempts, and you have to give yourself permission to do a bad job and to do a not perfect job with it, like you do with any other aspect of this. So don't expect it to have to be, again, with, with all of these, don't think it has to be perfect and don't expect it to be perfect the first go round. Paul says, for my anthology, should I make a logline for each story or should I use the logline for the roundabout story? You shouldn't write an anthology for a boot camp, is what I would say. But if you are doing that, then I, you have to have a logline for the whole thing. Yeah, you'll have to sort of generally summarize what the frame narrative is, if there is one. The types of stories they're going to be help us kind of understand what we will be in for. But even so, it is exceedingly difficult because a logline can't give you both in one sentence. It can't tell you what each of the stories is and summarize what all the stories will be. So that's why it's like not advisable to even write. 
Oh, he says it's not for the boot camp. Perfect. Okay. Well, then in that case, yeah, focus the logline on what is the frame story, probably, and tell us, you know, three different spooky campfire tales told by the Crypt Keeper or whatever it is. Maybe that's just where my mind immediately goes because I'm such a Tales from the Crypt guy. Uh, okay, so let's maybe take, let's look at the template for the logline and I'll take questions on anything we talked about so far and then we will share afterwards. So don't post anything yet, but after we do these next two slides, we will be sharing. So get ready to do that soon. Be typing out that early version and getting ready to copy and paste it into our chat along with title, genre, and comps. Let's look at the template. So, when or after inciting incident, that's otherwise known as the catalyst, and we interchangeably refer to those. An adjective protagonist must conflict before stakes. Or ticking clock. Explanation. So, when or after inciting incident, that's the catalyst which usually takes place around pages 10 to 15. And this is the nice way that loglines can help you see your structure even from the very early stage. And if it doesn't fit with what the structure would be, you can always change the logline or change the movie. Um, so we have the catalyst, that's the event that gets everything going. That's going to be when he's bitten by a radioactive spider. That would be the thing that kicks off. That's the catalyst of like nine movies because there's like 95 Spider-Men at this point. But you get the idea, right? Like clearly Peter Parker getting bitten by a radioactive spider is the catalyst of any Spider-Man, any or Spider-Man origin story, I should say. Or No Country for Old Men. What is it? He finds the briefcase full of money. Clear as day. The It can be a deliberate action or it can be a coincidence, but it's the thing that sets the story into motion. That breaks your character out of their normal day-to-day -day life and tells, you, tells them, hey, here's an opportunity for things to be different in some way. Whether it's good or bad is irrelevant. A great catalyst might be something that promises exactly what your character wants, or it might promise the opposite of what your character wants, and now maybe they need to struggle to maintain what they have. You know, if your character starts the story happy, and then something threatens to take away that happiness, the story might be them trying to defend what they have rather than trying to change their life radically. A lot of the time, the stakes are just they're trying to get back to normal. They're trying to get their life back to how things were before, in especially in horror and thriller, which makes for really easy stakes in horror and thriller. It's like, what or makes for a really easy goal. What does the character want? They want to go back to how things were before, obviously. And they want to not be eaten by a crocodile. An adjective protagonist. This tells us what's happening in the intro of your movie, and it sort of gives us a picture, a really brief snapshot of who they are at the start of the story. So if your character is going to drastically change, then we would probably describe, you know, what would what would Ebenezer Scrooge be? Well, we would describe him probably as like a curmudgeonly miser, right? An adjective noun. Now, the noun oftentimes might be, you can start with the character's job, and that gives us an impression of their socioeconomic status, skill set, and what they do all day. So sometimes it's relevant. Um, but for instance, like with Scrooge, is he a curmudgeonly, what is, he's a businessman, isn't he a business owner? We could call him a curmudgeonly businessman, I think we'd get the idea, but the point is, is that he's really ungenerous to begin the story. He doesn't want to share with anyone, and that's kind of the thing that changes. So that's why describing him as a curmudgeonly miser sort of tells us the thing that will be threatened, utilized, or changed over the course of that story. It's the most relevant trait of theirs in terms of the adjective and also the noun. So the profession isn't always the best place to stop, right? Sometimes if your character is a remorseful murderer, well, it's way better to say that than a remorseful, you know, bank teller. It's like, well, what are they remorseful about? Um, and so that sometimes can just, picking the right adjective and noun can save you a lot of words and it can paint an accurate picture of your main character in such a way that illustrates what is the unique tactic or skill set they're going to bring to the table here or what is the unique limitation they face or what is something they're struggling with or something that essentially needs to change about them. You can pick your adjective and noun carefully to reflect any of those things. And then we have must conflict. That's telling us what happens in act two. So make sure that matches what actually is happening in Act 2 in the story. So if it's, you know, a curmudgeonly miser must, uh, I don't know, climb a mountain before an avalanche hits, then Act 2 of the story would be him climbing a mountain. Like, that should be very clear what we're doing in the majority of the movie based on the logline. And you need to be tangible and specific. It shouldn't be something like, he must gain a better sense of self. Or he must, don't, like, God forbid we use the, the come to terms with phrase, which is forbidden. I, I've stricken it from the record, and we are not using the phrase come to terms with in loglines ever. It is against the rules, because it just tells us nothing. 
It has no physical or it has no tangible goalpost. It has no end point. It's so internal and it doesn't really mean anything. Coming to terms with something is not a cinematic goal. It might be the subtext of a story. It might be something that your character does along the way. But in terms of what is your tangible external goal, you need to frame it around something else. So if your character has to come to terms with their father's death or something like that, maybe they have to clean out his old house. And that's the premise of the movie. You know, your parent was a hoarder. They've passed away. And through trying to clean out this house, your character will, yes, come to terms with that death eventually somehow. But they have a tangible goal as well. And it's very important in features to have some sense of understanding what we're going to be watching the people do. And not just that we imagine a series of very nebulous and episodic situations or it's important that we not feel like it's just a movie about people sitting around discussing stuff or talking about stuff rather than actually seeing and doing those things and putting them in situations where they're forced to move around in the world, interact with other characters, come up with plans and attempt to put them in motion. Like your character should be actively doing stuff and it should feel like they are the right protagonist for the story in the sense that they are, they have agency. They're able to formulate plans and put them into motion. They're not, like, if we pick a war story, but your main character is in prison the whole time, should we maybe just choose someone else as the protagonist? Someone else that is able to run around and do the war stuff? So those are all things to think about. Your logline has a lot that goes into it and a lot that it's supposed to do, but don't feel like it has to be perfect. It's okay if it's a goof right now. You can do a goofy job, and we can give you feedback, and that's what today is all about. So now is the time to share. Let's share what you have post in the chat title genre logline and comps if you got them and i'll be able to put them up in a google doc and give you guys feedback and ask questions so be ready to speak on mic as well all right i'll give you guys a minute to do that and i'll be back
All right, I see a few log lines in the chat, so we're gonna just go through in order what they were posted, and you can continue posting yours as we go, because we have 40 minutes left, so we probably can do maybe 10, 15 minutes on each one. So feel free to keep posting even as we go through these other ones and give feedback to the writers. All right, let's start with, for some reason I'm not able to see his full username. Uh, guy with a cat username whose first name starts with L? That would be me, that's uh, Lokavidu. All right, sorry about that. I don't know why Discord cuts off usernames sometimes. I can't even see. No worries, that. happens. All right, so Trespass. Let's bring it up. And I'm gonna have you read it out loud. Try me to read the whole thing or just the log line in the comms? Um, you can read the whole thing. Okay. Whenever you're ready. Uh, yep. Yeah. Title, Trespass. Genre, Thriller. Log line. Following a trespass encounter gone wrong, a wary veteran has to protect his farm from the attacking biker gang seeking revenge. Comps. Green, ma uh, sorry, green room plus no country for old men plus don't breathe. I know you said two comps, Max, but man. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> great. So thanks for sharing this. Um, just to begin Thank with, I will, I will say there is a Joel Schumacher movie called Trespass from 2011. Um, not a huge oh. deal. Like some movies do have, uh, you know, titles are not really exactly copyrighted or whatever. So it's not a huge deal. But just if this affects your decision at all, Nick Cage, Nicole Kidman, Ben Mendelsohn, 2011. It was not well received. And... Uh, it's not like a famous movie or anything, but this just was a mainstream feature film with this title. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. Um, thank you for, for highlighting that. To be fair, Trespass is more of a temporary title. I uh, just chucked it in there, but I'm more than uh, open to suggestions. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Um, this The title is like the least important thing at this stage anyway. Okay, let's look at the idea. So, following a trespass encounter gone wrong, a weary veteran has to protect his farm from the attacking biker gang seeking revenge. So when you say a trespass encounter, does that mean they that bikers were trespassing on his land or he was trespassing on theirs? Yeah, yeah, good question there. Uh, yeah, basically, one of the bikers uh, ends up on his land trespassing and following misunderstanding, the uh, main character ends up killing one of the bikers. Okay, I think I would lead with that. That sounds more urgent and specific and evocative. So following a trespassing encounter where he, I, I don't know how to phrase it exactly, but if you, in, instead of just yeah. describing the type of incident that it is, tell us when mm -hmm. he shoots one of them, when he kills somebody, when he kills a member, when he kills a biker that's trespassing on his land, something like that too. Mm -hmm. A weird okay, thank you. has to protect his farm from the attacking biker gang seeking revenge. Okay, so I'm with you on the basics of this. I mean... This, to me, is one of these situations where it's like, there's nothing wrong with this logline necessarily, except that it is kind of falling into shark movie syndrome, where sh the shark movie uh, problem is the logline will be something like, when she's attacked by a shark, a surfer must fight the shark or else be killed by the shark. You know what I mean? It's like, right. the situation makes sense, but I'm looking for a little more juice, a little bit mm -hmm. more personal connection with the character and the situation or a better sense of the central relationship maybe, or like, is the antagonist someone that you can maybe bring out and highlight a little more? Or does the main character have some specific or unique tactic or limitation that he faces or uses? Um, so like, the, the logline works and I get the situation. And I love these movies and you're kind of, Green Room is one of my favorite movies. Um, oh, nice. so, so I'm totally with you. But I think that we, we're looking for a little spice and looking for a little uh, this is where i have when, when the logline works i have to start giving the weird vague kind of notes like i need more juice and more mm -hmm. spice and i know that's kind of stupid yeah. and, and sounds weird to, uh to say but um try to think of how you can bring out a central relationship here is it just the guy on the farm solo alone no no um initially in my head it was but then after, so the more i thought about it it was like okay if it's just a guy it's gonna be a pretty boring film i'm not gonna be able to include a um kind of like b plots i'm not gonna be able to like expand on some character relations so it has to be more than just a guy right so 
yeah, no, I fully, fully agree with what you say, and uh, that's that makes a lot of sense in terms of like the spice and the, you know, adding more juice into it. So I do appreciate that. Thank you. Sure, sure. So yeah, think like, it's not that he's protecting a farm; he's protecting his family, his estranged child. Like, who is it that he's, he's protecting? And that might give us a little bit more um, of a look into the character's internal journey, because right now it sounds like an external journey. I mean. The bad guys showed up, you shoot one of them by accident or you didn't mean to, then they're going to attack you. But then how mm-hmm. is the main character actually changing, right? And I could see, for instance, if you say a war-weary veteran must protect his estranged child, That okay, I get that might be the story of him reconnecting with that child or becoming a father, becoming a protector, something like mm-hmm. that. So it doesn't have to be that. You can pick whatever you want. Um, and you just have to kind of find a point of focus where we can be a little bit more gripped by the situation or by the character. Um, And so, Mm -hmm. like, maybe there's a ticking clock that you can, if, like, because, like, in Thriller, the main character is basically the situation. Um, And the the specifics of the setup can really matter because they sort of paint the picture for the rest of the movie and let us understand what is going to be the escalation of this you know, I, I, I think I, I see what you're going for right now, but if you can get a little more specific, find something to bring out more from that character's journey, and if there's something else you can give us in terms of, like, um, the, maybe part of the hook is the environment or the tactic the character uses, or, like, think mm-hmm. of, or, like, did you see the new Rambo? I haven't yet, no. So that's sort of like this, where it's, like, Rambo's just trying to lead his quiet life uh, in his home, and then a bunch of bad, like, he messes with the wrong guys, and then they come after him in waves and whatever, but he's a Vietnam veteran, right? So he rigs the entire yeah. place up with crazy traps. Of course he does. Um, like, you know, mm. predator-style logs that swing down in mines and claymores and all this stuff, so that's, like, the tactic he would use. Now the bad guys have to get through his trap-laced farm to find him. So that's just, like, an example. There's, like, a cu- there's like five or six different things you could do to juice this up and find it, so you need to find what works mm-hmm. for you and what makes sense for the story that you want to tell. But I hope just that gives you a couple ideas of areas to maybe think of in terms of expansion. Yeah, no, 100%. That's really, really helpful, especially the example with uh, with Rambo. I'm definitely going to gonna watch that. Sounds like it ties really well into into this um, kind of thematically and action-wise. So thank you. Appreciate sure, it. Sure, sure. No problem. Any questions on this one? Um, not for the logline, no. In terms of the comps, um, I know there's like three do we have to stick to two i know it's ideal you do have to stick to two um just because even when you enter in fellowships and contests and stuff they will have slots for like two comps you just can't enter more than that a lot of the time (laughs) okay i see what you mean yeah but but we could pick i mean so you have green room and don't breathe so don't breathe and is a very kind of pulpy like almost exploitation movie level of like blood and gore and as much tension as possible and like it's a movie that exists for the thrill right no country for old men has elements of that but is also about a deep examination of the darkness inside all of humans right and things like that so i would maybe pick one or the other of them based on which direction are you going with it do you want to just make the most entertaining tense situation possible or are you trying to do you have aspirations of speaking more to human nature to these kind of more abstract themes or more complicated themes do you is this a genre thrill a minute movie or is this a more contemplative slower paced movie i think you should think about which comp you want to choose based on that okay no i, I do appreciate that now i think off the top of my head i already know the answer to that and i think i'm gonna you know lean more into the no country for all men angle rather than don't breathe but I, I, that really helps to clear it up great okay then yeah if you pick green room and no country then my expectation is that yeah this will be a really gory tense suspenseful thriller but also that you might have characters that do big speeches or you may have long very quiet and contemplative sequences of the movie that attempt to kind of underscore your themes about being about more than just what's going on here you may have almost more literary Mm -hmm. aspirations where it's trying to speak to all of humanity all of human existence things like that that's what Cormac McCarthy is all about yeah I've been reading a lot of Cormac McCarthy lately I've literally got one book left out of his bibliography so yeah that kind of you can tell the influence yeah, yeah, I'm a huge fan as well. So um, it's a it's a fine comp to have, but and and if you're choosing that, then you're saying my goals are similar to his goals. Mm. No, I appreciate that. I mean, you know, hopefully I managed to land somewhere in, even yeah. remotely close. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's that's the thing is like choosing amazing comps. It's like, am I comparing myself to that? You don't have to necessarily worry about that. Like, if you're gonna try your best, and if it ends up being like that, then it's fine. It's just really looking at the intention of the work, not necessarily saying it has to land there. 
Yeah, yeah, no, 100%. I, mean, I do get what you're saying. Thank you. All right. Um, so I think that's all for now. If you have no more questions, we'll wrap this one up. So this sounds good. I'm in for the Biker Gang Siege. So hope that you continue with this one. Thank you. Appreciate it, Connor. Thank Thanks. You. Hope that helps. All right, let's keep going. Uh, let's do Zero with a sci-fi thriller that doesn't have a title yet. Comps are Bird Box and Silent Hill. That sounds cool. I'm glad I have several horror thrillers to go up <laughs> to do right off the bat. All right, I've invited you to the stage. Zero, if you're able to click the green bar and accept, then you'll be able to speak out loud. If you're having trouble finding it on a mobile device, you may have to turn the device on the side. If you can't um, access it for some other reason, you may need to exit the room, then rejoin, or maybe restart Discord. Okay, um, I'm going to come back to you, Zero. When I'll, I'll leave the invitation up, and if you're able to get it, then uh, just join the stage whenever you can. Let's do Hemingway with a dark comedy road trip. Welcome. Hello. Hi. You want to read this out for us? Sure. I don't have the title yet, and I was thinking Bad Trip, but that sounds too generic, and I'm pretty sure there's probably like a dozen movies that are named Bad Trip. Yes, there so, are. Uh, I, yeah. That's so, cool. yeah. So the genre is a dark comedy road trip. Um, at least that's what you know, I have to go with. Um, when a beleaguered writer wakes up in hell after a bad trip, he must find a way to escape before he dies in real life. But his only help is a drug addled classical Roman poet. The comps are Fear and Loathing and Dante's Inferno. This sounds cool. Let me read it again and see if I understand. Um, when a beleaguered writer wakes up in hell after a bad trip. Wait, so he wakes up in hell, but he's not dead. He's not dead. He's, uh, I'm, I'm trying, like, I'm thinking that it's basically in his mind, but uh, it's sort of like, you know, finding your own self kind of way. But I'm like, you know, it's still like too early. They gave me the idea like two days ago, and I haven't had the time to like look up Dante's Inferno yet. <laughs> so <laughs> that's what I have, like, you know, to begin with. Okay, so he, due to some kind of cosmic glitch, he falls yeah. asleep and wakes up in his soul. Wakes up in hell, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. And he must find a way to escape before he dies in real life. What is threatening to kill him in real life? Just like his body is unattended and in like a coma and he will die of starvation or exposure? Basically, like uh, in the original, so like in the, in the original Inferno, if I'm not wrong, it's basically the sort of like, you know, you go through the seven layers of hell or whatever, how many of the layers of hell and you emerge, you know, closer to God or whatever. I'm not, I'm not, uh, Religious, so I actually have no idea past that. That's that's all I know. So I figured it would be sort of a like a disconnect from your soul puts you know basically kills you after some amount of some amount of time, or at least that's the thing that's been told immediately once he wakes up, because. If I'm remembering correctly, Dante in the original book also isn't supposed to be going through hell and has to, like, you know, there's some sort of, like, uh, loophole or something that Virgil uses to get him through, like, through the, like, the law, like, you know, into hell. Oh, so okay. I was thinking that would be a good way to, like, sort of, like, set it up, uh, you know, as why he's there and why he needs to leave because he's not supposed to be there. And so how long does he have to do this then? Um, I would say maybe like a day <laughs> in hell, uh, but I like again, that's one of the things that I'm not sure about because um, you can say, like, I can probably justify it as you know, time moves differently in hell as opposed to the real world because you know, punishments have to go on for longer or whatever, mm -hmm. but then you know, I'm not sure, like, it has to happen within a set amount of time, and I thought one day was good enough. 
but okay. that means that he has to travel through the, the multiple layers of hell in one day. So I don't know if that's also feasible. So, well, it's a I need to... fantasy, so it's a it's up to you ultimately on how yeah. exactly it works. But I would say, if you're saying that his body will just die arbitrarily after a certain amount, after one day or whatever, then this sounds like some kind of divine test. This isn't just an ax like it's not just like a cosmic glitch that he ended up here. It's some sort of deliberate mm -hmm. test of his. I don't know what it's testing exactly. Um, yeah. But if that's the case, maybe you could frame that in the logline, in, unless that's like a big mystery why he's here in the first place. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Some some other comps for you might be, there's a movie called Wrist Cutters, a love story. And okay. there's also a movie called Monkey Bone, which is a surreal dark comedy with Brendan Fraser, directed by Henry Selleck. Yeah, yeah I've, I've heard of, I, I think I've seen it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good one, and in okay. that, I, I really yeah. like... I'm a huge monkey bone apologist, and I will say uh, the... So so in that one, the ticking clock is they're, he's in a coma, and they're going to pull the plug on him because... Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, so he his body's in the hospital in real life, and um, of, if he doesn't wake up in time, he can he gets like occasional flashes of what's going on up above, and he's like, crap, I have to hurry. They're going to pull the plug. They're starting to lose hope that I'm going to wake up, that sort of thing. Right, right. So I guess just you have to tune your rules kind of carefully and make it like pretty simple. Like um, mm -hmm. either, either God has given him three days to get through hell as a test of his, I don't know, faith, something like that. It sort of seems like just a test of how good you're able to drive a car through a fire swamp or whatever. But like, if you want to frame <laughs> yeah. it, <laughs> if you, you can frame it as a test of his faith or devotion or whatever you want, though, because I don't know, I could see different arbitrary religious celestial figures kind of putting people through that and then being like, well, if you didn't drive through the fire swamp good enough, I guess you didn't have enough faith. Yeah. Um, but I guess maybe just clarify what specifically it is that they are testing of him. Um, gotcha. Makes sense. And then if you say his only help is a drug-addled classical Roman poet. Do you mean Virgil for this one? Yes. It is Virgil. Okay. Um, yeah. You, I, The way that you've explained it here is pretty much fine, and I think anyone that can see the connection between this and uh, the Divine Comedy will understand that this is supposed to be Virgil. Um, and I also understand that he, you're kind of doing the fear and loathing thing where... The guy who's supposed to be helping you is just as messed up as you are, if not more messed up, right? So he's kind of the, yeah, yeah. What do we call him? Um, the uh, Hunter Thompson's attorney guy that he travels everywhere with. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I like the setup here. I think you need to get a little more specific on just like the why is this happening? Why? Is... Why? Yeah. And that will affect the rules. Because if, gotcha. God, if God is doing this or Satan is doing this to him, maybe Satan's doing it, right? And say, maybe Satan mm -hmm. is like. I bet you can't get through Helen three. Or maybe he was like a writer uh, that dissed Satan in his most recent book or something like that. And now Satan's like, well, if you think you're so much better than me, like maybe just work on the setup a little bit and help. I know you're early on in the idea, so it's fine to not know the answers to these things yet. But the why this is happening will affect the rules. Gotcha. Which, yeah, I like the idea yeah, of whatever that. he's writing, like like pissing off the like the celestial beings and them being like, yeah, we're gonna give you an impossible challenge of getting through hell if and if you can make it, you live or else you die. Yeah, yeah I, I like that. Maybe he's like an atheist that he writes a book called "Who's Afraid of Hell" or something like that, right? And then yeah. Satan grabs him while he's asleep and says, "Well, now you're gonna be afraid of hell, aren't you?" So maybe <laughs> it's like they've taken personally something he's done in his written work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That sounds, it's funny. That I, I like it. Really it, has a, it has a nice kind of Douglas Adams type of tone, Terry Pratchett kind of feel and vibe to it. So I think it sounds really great. Um, try to just get a little more specific with your characters, like the actual ticking clock and final goalpost for this, because that will affect things like the stakes and like uh, how long your character has to actually accomplish the mission. And it will also help us see his internal journey a little more if we understand why he's specifically being the one to go through this. So it's not just a test of can you drive from one side of the world to the other. It's a test of mm -hmm. do you appreciate your life? It's a test of do you have respect for other people? It's a test of, you know, try, maybe you can imply what they're really testing from him besides just his ability to do the trip. Gotcha. Yeah. Hope that helps. Thank you. Um, well, I know you're at the early stage still, so there's a lot of feeling it out and a lot of just figuring out that you have to do still. But do you have any other big questions just right now? Uh, not right now, because like I said, it's too early and I still need to like read Dante's Inferno probably. <laughs> so at least the um, Yeah, exactly. So yeah. Um for now nothing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hope that helps. Yeah.
All right, let's keep going. We have uh, two more, it looks like. We'll do Humans, a sci-fi horror. That sounds cool. Come on up. Don't think I can read your username without getting demonetized. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> All right, let's get into Humans. <clears throat> um, so just read the log line? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, um, give me a second. When a colony ship encounters the remains of another mission on an uninhabited planet, they are forced to defend themselves against the very people they were sent to save. Okay. Aliens meets Gattaca. That's interesting. Yeah. I mean, um, there, are lots so I, of, so there are lots of twists. So there are lots of twists, and I didn't want to put that into the log line. Mm -hmm. I understand. Um, so let me just ask a couple questions, perhaps. Aliens yeah. meets Gattaca. Have you seen Pandorum? Pandorum? No, I haven't. Maybe a better comp than Gattaca. I would look into that one. Okay. Um, but, uh, so, Colony Ship encounters the remains of another mission on an uninhabited world. So, just to make sure we're on the same page. A Colony Ship being uh, a huge vessel that is intended to kind of, like, bring humanity to a new planet to start over or to colonize yep. the planet. From, yep. gr from, ground, from ground zero, from square one, right? Yes. Okay. They encounter the remains of another mission, meaning another the previous colony ship that attempted to colonize here? Yes, except it's uh, there's no record of this mission. There's no record of it. Oh, okay. Of yeah. another mission. So... I would you <clears throat> maybe even spell that out a little bit. Uh, okay. In a log line, maybe something like remains of... Well, but then again, it seems like you do have a lot of kind of mystery to it, and you... And, part of the fun of the story is figuring out what exactly is going on here. So I think, yeah. I think it maybe it might make sense to say they encountered the remains of the previous expedition. Just mm -hmm. know they don't quite have a record of it or whatever, just so that we understand. If you just say another mission, I just don't quite know what that means for the purposes of the story. So the previous right. col colony ship, I think, is what you sort of mean. Yeah. On an that is, that is... mm -hmm. And then they are forced to defend themselves against the people they were sent to save but a colony ship isn't sent to save people it's sent to colonize so what do you mean exactly well okay so i i, I didn't know whether government because i i'm you know I'm, I'm not that far along like there's not an outline it's just a general idea and a couple of of scenes that i've i've thought up so far but like i'm not sure who the main antagonist is is it the government that sent them there is it like a planetary federation is it like um a corporation i'm not entirely sure whatever the case may be whoever is funding the colony ship is the antagonist okay and also are they like monster people now or what's the uh the people they that were on the <laughs> last expe expedition have they been turned into like zombies or aliens or demons or not real? not zombies but hybrids yeah okay, so like mutants? alien yeah alien dna hybrid so um I, I guess that that's the that's the story or that's the twist that we figure out. They're mm -hmm. they're being genetically engineered with various strains, and if those strains are not ideal, then the then the expeditionary leaders uh, end up nuking or not nuking, but wiping out the entire colony. Okay. <clears throat> so they're trying to avoid the same fate. I see. I see. Okay. Um. So. You're saying there is already a, some kind of... It's not an uninhabited planet after all? Uh, yes, it was thought to be uninhabited. That's why they're going there. Mm -hmm. It turns out it is not an un uninhabited. There are some... There are still some... There's... Well, I'm not sure, again, if we're meeting actual survivors at that first expedition and, or experiment, or if we're just finding remains and solving the mystery that way. Right. So... so there is evidence that it was not previously... That, that it that there was an expedition before i see okay um so i think the the bones of this are good um the basics are there i think in terms of the log line it feels a little vague to just say like they're forced to defend themselves against the people they were sent to save when we weren't yeah. aware that they were sent to save anyone to begin with um, gotcha so if you can just spell it out a little more like twists are not that big a deal to spell out okay. the log line, especially if it's something that would hook us into reading um, mm. because the reader's going to find out within 
you know, 30 minutes, 40 minutes of reading anyway, what the answer to that is, we might as well, like, if you can use the space of the log line to get them to read it, that is the primary challenge of the log line. Okay. Um, okay. So I would maybe say something a little bit more like that um, when a colony ship discovers that the previous expedition has been turned into ravenous mutants, a blank <laughs> character must blank before blank. So focus gotcha. on the protagonist as well. Okay. Like, give it a specific protagonist. It's okay. Yes, that, that's right. And that way you can sort of frame that person's journey. Like, if it's a janitor on the ship, we can see how that would be. Their goal is more like survive. Where, whereas mm -hmm. if it's going to be like, it's about the captain of the expedition, well, we can imagine mm -hmm. their, their responsibilities and goals would be more like, I need to make sure we can colonize the planet still. Or something right. like that. So I would give away the twist of the antagonists just because that's kind of your main hook for a, a horror okay. movie is like the threat, the villains. Okay. That's kind mm -hmm. of why people come to horror films is because of that specific villain. Yeah. Um, so I would give away the mutant thing. Focus on that protagonist. And then um, a specific goal for that character that hints at their internal journey which so if it's like a janitor must protect his family from these mutants mm -hmm. it sort of tells us one internal goal and, and set of internal stakes and then if it's like mm. i need to save all these people that i promised to say you know i i swore i would bring this fifty thousand people to a new planet that's like a whole different set of specific goals and internal stakes so right okay. th those three things in mind i think you should be able to get a pretty strong log line out of the setup okay questions yeah that's no that's very helpful yeah I, I i i came into this but with not really any idea of what to do this is my first stab at <laughs> creating a log line for my very unfleshed out idea so this is all really helpful great yeah and hopefully maybe some sometimes when you work on a log line that can actually give you story ideas where you're like well the log line's not working i need to yeah. add something that'll make the log line better and the thing that you add to make the log line better actually makes the story better too yeah, the way you broke it down in a, in a previous um, slide, like how you're getting to those Act 2 obstacles and goals, that, that was extremely, extremely insightful. Great, great. Okay, well, if you have no further questions, we'll um, move on for now, but hopefully that helps. And it does, thank you. Shape that up even more. Thanks a lot. Thank Thanks you. Mm -hmm. All right, looks like we have time for one more. Eden. Well done, done well. Hey, if you only have time for one more, uh, Zero didn't have his turn. Oh, is he able to speak now? I think he said so. Let me try it. Go ahead and accept if you're able to, Zero. He's typing. It's because he's invited to speak. I should have time to do both. Zero, are you able to join the stage? Maybe not. I'll leave that up. I'll leave the invitation. Oh, go ahead. You can you can click join if you're able to. Okay, we'll start with you, Eden. Zero, if you're able to join, then I'll do yours immediately next. All right, let's start with well done, done well. All right. Uh, so it, um, I have troubles with log lines so my log line is unfinished okay uh i was thinking of kind of like a generation gap comedy type thing uh where it, it has these like very nice and heavy moment like not heavy heavy but like uh hard hitting moments of something or another Okay. Dramedy, yeah, so that would that would be the mm hmm And I I grew up on nineties sitcoms, so those probably would be the parentals of this particular thing. I have everything mapped out in my head. I know exactly what each character sounds like, what they look like, what what they're gonna do, what their journey from A to B is gonna be. It's just it's just the log line that I'm stuck on. Okay. And this is a feature, right? No, 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 no. This would be a series. Oh, uh, okay. This is this is feature boot camp. Oh. We have a new TV class starting soon, though. That's going to be... Um, I've signed up. Great. Okay. That's going to be on the Friday slot. 
um, Friday. In, in that case, I, I I very much apologize. I'm sorry. No, no, you're totally fine. My first note was just going to be, this feels like a TV show. Well, hmm, I wonder how we can make this feel more like a feature. And that would just not be useful notes for you because you're actually trying to do a show. Um, but, I mean, the uh, pilot yeah. could be it could be like a feature, but uh, but but that's in the stars still. Thank you, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Co comedy pilots are usually not feature length. They're about half an hour, um, and mm. feature is going to be like 90 minutes. So, um, I see different different structural requirements. In in any case, I'll be glad to look at this in the pilot boot camp. So definitely bring this to the next Friday. Yeah, uh, sorry for my mistake. No problem at all. Thanks for sharing. Thank you. All right, zero. Um, you're up. All right, can you guys hear me? Yeah, I hear you fine. Hello. Uh, one, thank you, Eden, for um, uh, remembering. I appreciated it. Okay, awesome. I'm sorry for the technical difficulties. No, no problem, you're totally fine. Let's start by reading out your logline for us. Okay, so my logline is, after a crash in a, in a strange town, a couple of weeks to find their daughter missing, they soon realized that otherworldly forces threatened to keep them away from her forever. Okay. And comps are bird box and stuff. Uh, Hill. Um, and, go ahead. Yes. And the genre is sci-fi and thriller. Okay. So that tells me that eventually we will learn there is a sort of somewhat kind of plausible scientific explanation for what's going on here. Is that right? Yes. We will. Okay. Just checking. Because, like, Silent Hill, for instance, we would not say is sci-fi. Silent Hill does not have a scientific explanation behind what's going on. Yeah, no, it doesn't. I wanted it to have the, the kind of, like, vibe of Silent Hill. Kind of, like, mm -hmm. they're in the town, and, like, the town is kind of being oppressed by some type of force, if that, that makes sense. Because both of them are kind of, like, religious, in a way. And I kind of want it to have a religious feeling to it, to where, like, the town is being used as, like, puppets, in a way. Similar to also Bird Box, how, like, the beings... Well, spoiler alert. Right. But, like, how the beings will, um, like, kind of, like, mess with the heads of the people who don't die. Yeah. I'm with you. And, yeah. Yeah. So let's go... And so some of the basics. After crashing in a strange town, I'm fine with this as the intro, and I actually really like stories that are just, like, you ran off the road in the wrong place at the wrong time. A couple mm. is not a protagonist, so you need to focus this on yes. one or the other of them. So a blank okay. noun, you know, an adjective noun, and his or her spouse, husband, wife, whatever, awaken to find their daughter missing. Okay, they soon realize otherworldly forces threaten to keep them away from her forever. Do they threaten to do that, or are they like attacked by zombies, or what exactly does this mean? Okay, so in my head, I was thinking like, while they're looking for her, since they're in a town, they kind of like realize since it's also like partially religious that there's like some type of cult and like that they're probably trying to sacrifice their daughter that's kind of where i was going in my head like they're trying to like offer their daughter to this thing that is oppressing the town okay well then in that case you're going to want to phrase the second half of this more actively not they realize mm -hmm. this thing, but they must combat a deadly cult to save her before she's sacrificed make sense Oh, yeah, that makes more sense. Okay. So that includes the what they must do, so that's the act two, and also the stakes and ticking clock. So, Or maybe you, if, if there's even some specific thing, like if you're sacrificed in three days or whatever it is, you can include that if you have mm. that. It's okay if you don't. But, um, yeah, make that second half much more active. And also when you define the protagonist a little more carefully, like I've mentioned in a couple other ones, it'll help us to imagine how this internal journey will interweave with the external one. Because this is a totally different story if it's an inattentive or negligent parent that needs to now save their kid to prove that they are a good parent, as opposed to mm. your character starts as a good parent, and now they need to get their kid back, right? Like, that's just a different internal journey the whole time. Yeah. I think I want it to be the, the good parent that, like, kind of feels like a bad parent, like they're dealing with guilt at okay. the same time because they lost their child. And the spouse ties into this how? Like, what's the spouse's relationship? Um, so... I, I was going to focus on one parent originally, but then I was like, you know, I think I did it for my own sake of, like, knowing who it was, who would be in the story, but it was going to focus on, like, just one parent. I don't know which one, but the spouse was just there for, like, dialogue purposes and to, like, understand or, like, bring out information of who the main character was as a person, like a supporting character. Oh, okay. But, so, but still, that is 
like one of the most I, important I guess I would, in your main character's life, right? Yeah, I guess I would pick the father. Okay. You can go as the way. main character. Yeah, you can do it however you want, but you we just need to think like what is the dynamic between them? Are they happily married or are they okay. estranged? Are they on the way to the custody hearing? You know what I mean? All these things mm. promise different types of development for the characters throughout the movie. And they sort of help us understand how that person's going to change by the end, or at least how they're going to have the opportunity to change. They don't need to succeed. They can fail to save the girl if you want. Like, uh, that would be a super okay. dark ending, but you can do that. But we just want to know, kind of like, <laughs> beyond just the challenge of getting my kid back, how is your character actually changing or being forced to grow? Or are they being forced to do something they never thought they would do before? Is this like... Um, the story of them reconnecting with their kid or is this the story of them overcoming their own inadequacies like help us understand the focus of the story by specifying the main characters and their dynamic a little more clearly okay i think i understand so what if um this isn't in like log line format but what if like the couple and their daughter are going on a road trip to like basically like bring the family back together like maybe the mom and the dad are having like marital issues mm -hmm. or like relationship problems and so while trying to like find their daughter it's hard because they have tension between themselves and they were going on this trip to like fix their family to begin with sure for that their works. daughter yeah that, okay that, that definitely does how work. would you mm -hmm. how would you write that if it um, were you like i would frame it as something like a uh after crashing in a strange town an adjective protagonist a workaholic dad like a workaholic father mm -hmm. I, i'm just picking a, a trait that would be like the reason they're having problems right a workaholic mm -hmm. dad must take his or and his estranged wife must battle a um a blood cult in order to rescue their kid before she's sacrificed something like that you're just going to pick your adjectives carefully to suggest like oh that's why they were fighting or that's the thing that has okay. driven this rift between them so okay the, so just like the, something the thing with oh, no, go ahead. log lines a lot of the time is that we're trying to explicitly state what the external journey is and we're trying to insinuate and suggest what the internal journey is which usually can be done by picking the right combination of adjective noun for your describing your central characters okay that makes sense hope that helps so um, got a good basis for this here go ahead oh no i was just gonna say so like just to recap because i like kind of like have to summarize things when people say things just so i remember but like for stating the main character i would like use an adjective to like describe him that like basically um allows like the reader to kind of assume conflict that may arise during the story yeah exactly okay cool so yeah, all right that was my only question sure sure so yeah bring out that central character dynamic to highlight the focus and the internal journey of the movie that we're about to go on all nice right. work with this thank you for sharing thank you for the feedback all right that is our class for today in the chat you can see there's a poll if you plan to sign up or you have interest in a boot camp you can click those little blue numbers a little one indicates you plan to sign up or maybe you have more questions or something like that there's a number for that too so check that chat and you'll find those options there we have week one next week sunday the 10th 10 to noon and this class will be in the 10 to noon sunday slot for the next eight weeks so we hope that you will return next time to continue working on your feature or we hope to see you at the other boot camps if you were just trying this one out, of course. Again, you can sign up at scriptcamp.net. Unlimited membership gives you access to every single class on every server of ours uh, with video recordings in the library, with exclusive logline channels, um, advanced lab, um, you know, lots and lots of benefits to signing up. So we hope to see you do that. Um, we also have classes coming up this weekend. We have sci-fi story ideas, which I mentioned before. So hope to see everybody there Sunday today at 5 p.m. And then here's the upcoming classes in September. Thanks so much, guys. Hope to see you soon at your next Script Camp class or event.